Greetings out there on YouTube land. Today's video is going to feature an amp that was brought to me for repairs. Uh, it's a late 50s uh, Gibson GA6 and uh, this amp came to be known as the Lancer but I don't believe they were called that back in the late 50s. This has nothing on it that would imply that it was a Lancer. Also uh, its chassis does not match the Lancer uh, schematic that you can find on the internet. There are some areas of similarity but uh, by and large it's about 50 percent different from that schematic. The problem with this amp is really unusual and that is it's way too loud. Now I've heard about 900 complaints of amps that weren't loud enough but this one is just the opposite. At, I mean, if you come just off of zero on the volume control, it will just about blow the speaker out of the cabinet. Uh, at a quarter volume, uh, you know, they would be recording you on the seismograph at Caltech. So uh, something's crazy going on in here and it has to be addressed. Also, in my opinion, the tone, um, I hate to say it, but uh, on some Gibson amps, the tone's a little thin. Uh, it's kind of shrill, uh, so we're going to have to address that issue. First, let's take a look at how the amp performed when it first came in. What we have here is a rather unusual problem. We're plugged into the instrument input. The volume is down at just off of zero, and the guitar is set at almost zero output. Now, listen to the volume that we're getting out of this. Very loud and rather tinny. I've got the uh, tone control set at like 5 out of 10. Uh, very unusual considering both volume on the guitar and the amp is almost at zero. Now after being on for a few seconds, there's no volume at all. Okay, I got the back panel off. You can see it looks like a new filter capacitor has been added in and then uh, two old ones have been cut out of the circuit but then left in, dripping uh, looks like wax, God only knows. Um, an extension cord has been spliced into the original power cord and it has its uh, Walmart two-pronged plug. Looks like a good replacement speaker, a Jensen special design uh, with a transplanted uh, output transformer and two reasonably new Groove Tube 6V6s. So uh, this is stone dead now. It makes no, no sound whatsoever. So it's time to start figuring out why. It appears this rear Astron, uh, it's a double capacitor. I can't see the value, I'll have to check. It's still being used in the circuit and it's probably the same age as the one below it, which is, you know, it looks like uh, it's seen better days. And then somebody's uh, added a 50 microfarad capacitor, whereas according to the schematic, uh, it's supposed to be uh, 20, 10, and 10. Still has all the old yellow Astron capacitors present. Uh, I'll have to test them and see if they're okay. They generally are. Before I stick my hands in this chassis, I'm going to discharge the filter capacitors. Uh, I made up a little tool to do this. I sharpened the tip of a Phillips screwdriver and then attached uh, one end of a, uh, this is a 100 uh, ohm 10 watt um, resistor, uh, one end, uh, one lead here, and the other lead comes out and I'm going to clip it onto the chassis. And then by touching this tip down here to the uh, positive electrolytic capacitor leads, I will discharge them. Okay, I've cut the cable ties uh, so that the 50 microfarad capacitor can be swung out of the way. Now, look here, we've got a 10 plus 10 Astron on top, 10 plus 10 Astron on the bottom. The bottom one had the two 10s hooked together and came over here to where the 50 has been used to replace it. Okay, so somebody, and I know the customer paid good money to have this done because the receipt was in the bottom of the cabinet. 
Somebody came in and said, oh God, this, this bottom Astron capacitor is just, it just looks terrible. So I'm going to clip it. Now 10 plus 10, that's 20. So let's put in a 50 to replace it. Now the upper one is just as bad, just as old, and probably just as dysfunctional, but I think I'll leave it in. Okay, you know, when I see stuff like this, I, I just don't understand uh, the thought processes of some people. So step one is going to be to replace the top Astron with two separate brand new 10 microfarad electrolytics. The bottom one we're going to replace with a single 20 microfarad, uh, the way the schematic uh, suggests. And then we will remove the 50 microfarad capacitor. Now for a few laughs, let's test the Astron capacitors. This one was left in, this one was removed. Using the ESR meter, we see that a brand new 10 microfarad capacitor reads at around 3.1. So I would say anything up around, say up to 3.5 would be acceptable. Okay, I've already tested the upper Astron here for capacitance, and this lead is 3.0, uh, which is, and it's supposed to be 10. This one's 7.8, and it was supposed to be 10 also. Now let's clip on and read the ESR values. Remember we said like 3, 5, maybe all the way up to 4 would be acceptable. Well, let's see, 58, not too hot. Remember, that was the one left in. Let's take a look over here at the other one. Well, it's even worse. It's immeasurably high. Uh, it was flashing nine, uh, 98 for a while, and then it just went out. The meter just gave up on it, and I think we will too. The bottom capacitor is actually worse. Remember, it's the one that was removed, and it's zero microfarads for both leads and immeasurably high ESR values, so it's a complete dud. The upper one, though, is almost as bad, um, so uh, we still are a little puzzled as to why this one was removed and this one was left in. Okay, here I've installed two new 10 microfarad filter capacitors and a new 20 microfarad and now I am going to convert uh, over to a 3-wire cord. You can see the 3-wire power cord installed here with a nice uh, chassis ground. Well, it's all fixed. Uh, let's uh, take a few seconds to review how it got that way. First off, a decent uh, three-wired grounded power cord instead of this beauty. Replacement of the lovely uh, Astron filter capacitors. Then to figure out why it went stone dead, um, I discovered the one of the 6v6 output tubes had developed a dead short between pin 4 and 8, which means that the high voltage right here suddenly had an easy route to ground through the cathode and it started to really overheat the 10K resistor. Now here is the resistor that was in it to begin with and you can see that heat has really gotten to it. And then when I put in a larger resistor you can see it really went up in smoke. So this was the tip-off and helped me to find the shorted tube, which I replaced with a nice vintage 6V6 and everything went back to normal. Normal, however, being that the volume at a setting of about 1 would almost blow the speaker out of the cabinet. So step 1, I took out the 12AX7 and put in a 12AT7, which has about two-thirds the gain of the 12AX7 which brought the volume down quite a bit. Then I added uh, resistors jumpering from the wiper to ground on both of the volume controls to restrict uh, the maximum volume they were capable of. And that resulted in a good usable volume. At full volume now the amp is real loud but not self-destructive but it still lacked bass and sounded kind of tinny. So the next step was to cathode bias the preamp tube. In the schematic, that's done, but on this one, uh, the cathodes were simply grounded. So I uh, added a capacitor and uh, about 850 ohms of resistance to ground to cathode bias it, which brought the bass way up. And then in typical Gibson fashion, the entire signal was being put through a .0005 capacitor, 
uh, which was effectively letting the high frequencies pass and not the bass. So I removed that and put in a 0.02 and uh, suddenly a whole lot of bass showed up. And finally to give the microphone input the same impedance as the instrument inputs, uh, they had it coming in uh, through a 0.01 microfarad capacitor with no impedance and I instead uh, changed it to where it has exactly the same impedance as the three instrument inputs. Let's take a few seconds here for a cautionary tale. In the bottom of the amp cabinet was this sack labeled Gibson Old Replaced Parts and these are the parts that are in it. Uh, they're all capacitors including this large Sprague uh, twist lock cap now, I have an itchy feeling that at some time or other, these capacitors were presented to the customer that owns this amp, uh, probably to justify a rather high uh, repair bill. Also in the bag was the invoice here for that splendid job on the electrolytic capacitors. Now, let's take a look in the chassis real quick, and you're going to see that not a single one of those components that were in the bag were ever in this chassis. They're not the same vintage or style of capacitor. Completely different. So just keep that in mind next time you're presented with a bag of old parts and told that they were removed from your amp. Uh, maybe they were and maybe they weren't. Well that said, uh, let's turn this beast around, plug it in and see how it sounds. Okay, I've got the amp set at half volume, 5 out of 10. And it's about the same volume as it was at about 0.1 originally. This is plugged into the microphone channel. Still bright and clean, but there's plenty of bass. Okay, now we're plugged into the instrument input and the volume set at right around mid point, around 5 out of 10. Sounds to me very much like the microphone input, uh, same impedance, same volume, and same tone. So I think it's a whole lot better than it was, and I think we'll button it up and give the customer a call. Well that about does it uh, for today's video featuring the late 50's Gibson GA6 amplifier. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the festivities and uh, found them interesting and hopefully informative and that you'll join me for future videos. Now Rusty and I are cooking up some dandies, so subscribe if you haven't already, and please stay tuned. We'll see you in the near future. Bye for now.